Hello, it's me again. I'm recording this right after the Toby Skip explanation video, because this is something I also discovered today. Uh, well, not discovered today, but finally realized an application for... I've known about this for a while, I just never connected the dots. Anyway, uh, what I want to talk to you about today is a uh, sort of strange, but, you know, reasonable mechanic, uh, which I call Flutter. Uh, since it's sort of like Yoshi's flutter jump from the Yoshi games. Uh, basically, if you let go of jump when Ami's jumping, her jump becomes a lot lower because she stops gaining height. She uh, stops getting propelled up in the air, or you could consider it like her gravity increases or something like that. I don't know exactly how it's handled internally. I'm not really going to speculate just based on visuals. Uh, but the important part is that when you stop holding jump, Ami starts, or stops going up. Uh, however, you can actually... Say you press jump for until this frame when Ami's nose is pointed straight up. She goes about this high. Uh, so let's say we do that, release jump, but then... Uh, after another brush buffer, so I haven't been, I didn't press jump since the previous jump buffer, or brush buffer I should say. But if I, say I hold jump now, I'm holding the jump button, she goes a bit higher, it should be pretty obvious, but she went like this high, she, she almost went off screen. Uh, not as high as a full jump if I was holding jump the whole time, but higher than... Uh, if I were to let go of jump button uh, and then not press it again. So there's clearly something going on where even if uh, you've already let go of jump, pressing it again will actually still extend your jump a bit uh, in uh, the same way as you know Yoshi's flutter jump extends his jump a bit past what its normal arc would be. Uh, so this happens even if you have your double jump available, there's actually a lockout period of a few frames. Uh, you can hear I'm mashing the jump button, if you can't hear it in my... You can see there's a bit of a lockout period before you can actually use your double jump. Uh, so even if you have double jump, you can still do this flutter effect on both your normal jump and your double jump. Uh, but furthermore, you can actually do this regardless of the timing uh, because uh, unlike actually jumping, for example, if I, I, I'm just on the ground right now, if I press the jump button and release the brush, nothing happens, uh, even though I press the jump button and unpause, uh, because actually jumping requires... Uh, so to speak, a rising edge. It's, it requires that I actively press the jump button outside of paused gameplay. However, the flutter effect only requires that the button be held. It doesn't require that you actually press jump, only that jump is held down. Which means uh, you can flutter, or you can use the brush to like time your flutter input uh, very precisely without having to like time it as the brush ends and gameplay resumes. Uh, which is very helpful, because it means we can time our flutters quite precisely, which is... Uh, I'm sure why you, why you would imagine we're here in Himiko's Palace. Uh, that was bad. Uh, so, the idea here... Uh, there's not really any conceivable place this mechanic would be useful, uh, besides this particular place. So let's uh, reset the camera here. Uh, we'll set up our position, and I'm going to start right away by saying uh, this does not make this trick much easier. So this is a good start, I think. Uh, so we have pretty ordinary jump, and if I just let this go, if I let go of jump and let go of the brush, we will fly right under this first gate here. Right, and we'll get pretty much the max distance possible. But if I release jump, for two frames, for one brush buffer, then press jump again, we'll actually hit the ceiling, even though, uh, even though we had a perfect jump. 
Uh, and that should make it quite apparent, like, categorically, that Flutter is real. And it can make a difference. It's a pretty small difference, but it makes a difference. Uh, and this effect, uh, on this first jump, you can't, you really can't use Flutter, as far as I can tell, to make it under this gate with any more distance than you normally would. Uh, and the reason for that is... Uh, Flutter can't be used, or it doesn't have any effect if there's too much of a gap uh, between when you release jump and when you press it again. And it seems like the limit is two or three frames. So there can be a two or frame, three frame gap uh, between you releasing jump and pressing it again. Which means if you do two brush buffers, uh, even if you press jump after the second one, uh, it won't have any effect whatsoever on your jump distance, not even a little. Uh, so there's no flutter to speak of there. Uh, so you can only really do one brush buffer between releasing jump and pressing it again. And that's how you get maximum flutter effect. And as it turns out, there's no, like, no um, like amount of flutter is uh, not too much to prevent you from hitting the ceiling on this first gate here. So we can't use flutter to make this first jump any easier. It's still going to be about as frame perfect as it always was. However, uh, what makes this discovery interesting is what happens on the second jump. So you can see I messed up my buffer a little bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do here uh, we'll see if this works. Uh, I'm not terribly experienced with all of the different, like, combinations of how Flutter can work. Because not only can you, like, press jump again to start getting Flutter, you can actually release jump again to make your Flutter smaller. So I can uh, advance two frames, release jump, uh, press jump again, release it again, and that lets me make it. So that would be two extra frames of jump input after the flutter gap. And that happens to make it from that position. And that would be instead of in that same position before, what we would have done is try to do a long buffer where we uh, buffer ahead three frames because two frame or like three brush buffers in that position, three two frame buff brush buffers wouldn't have made it. So here I have buffered two times. Normally what we do now is uh, buffer uh, another time. So we would do three brush buffers holding jump and then we would release jump and then just hold forward. What I'm going to do is I'm going to release jump after the second buffer, do another one, and then I'm going to hold jump now. And that also makes it. Uh, and in fact, I think that made it by a wider margin than uh, otherwise would have. Now, I don't have task tools and I can't check this categorically, but it does seem like this makes the second jump a lot more forgiving. Uh, but there are various caveats to it. But, like, in the ideal circumstance, uh, when you do it just like what I showed, it makes the second jump way easier. Uh, both me and Krino have felt it. Uh, so this really does, I would say, dramatically improve at least the consistency of Fire Tablet Skip, or at least it should. Uh, it's not necessarily going to make it any easier because we still have this awkward start to deal with, uh, but it does make it so that once you get that first jump, it should be way easier to get the second jump, which means there's going to be much higher success rate, I would say, uh, in runs, uh, as long as I can get Reverse Tab Skip to keep on demonstrating this. Uh, I'm quite rusty, I have not really practiced this trick since I took a break two months ago. Anyway, uh, now, like I said, there are caveats to this. Uh, you'll, uh, if you remember, the first time I showed this, I did, uh, like a short flutter where I only added two frames of jump input. And the reason for that is, if you end up with a buffer like this, where you end up on, like, the first frame of jump, uh, a full flutter will actually cause you to gain so much height that you hit the ceiling. And that might seem counterintuitive because we have less jump here, but we're going to gain more height from the flutter. Uh, and 
overall I don't I I don't fully understand how this works so take this with a grain of salt but it seems to me like if you uh, do that flutter gap earlier in the jump it actually makes a bigger difference in the overall jump height uh, so it'll it'll give you a bigger boost than you otherwise would get and I don't really understand why that happens uh, but that's how it seems so instead we're going to uh, buffer one release one buffer one more time uh, that was actually a bit long so there's a there's a bit of a leniency there uh, but that did work to get through and that was in a situation like again where if that would have been savable it would have had to be a long buffer which is not the most consistent technique uh, this is what I would call a pretty ordinary buffer uh, and this is a situation where if I just did a third buffer uh, holding jump it would probably work uh, but it's just way more forgiving to do the flutter uh, and you get you get by with a pretty much pretty much wider margin of error for like the timing of the tackle and your exact positioning throughout the beginning of the trick. It's just way more forgiving. And the timing's more consistent, I would say, as well. Uh, there we go, messed up the first jump for once. Uh, so one thing that can happen, uh, this has happened to me a few times where I do the flutter and it seems like all the inputs are normal, uh, but I gain a bit too much of a boost and I hit the ceiling. Uh, and again, I, I don't fully understand why that happens. Uh, we might have to do more research on this since I only started exploring this earlier today. Uh, but in a majority of cases, flutter does help and it does make the trick work uh, more reliably. I'm gonna lose my dash here, so. This is just ordinary fire tail, let's skip stuff. Nothing special going on here. So you can see, okay, there. The first time I only barely made it, but it still worked. Uh, if you look closely at the movement, if you're used to the movement we normally get after uh, that second jump, it might look a little bit strange. To me, it looks like Ami gets a bit of an extra boost, uh, which is pretty much exactly what I would expect if Flutter works the way I think it does, which is uh, by lowering Ami's gravity uh, during the rising part of her jump specifically. Overall, I would say this does make the second part of the trick a lot more interactive because you have to decide whether to do that short flutter or not. Uh, sometimes it helps, sometimes it hurts. Uh, and it, it really, I think this is overall a very good contribution, a very good discovery. Uh, just for the heart, what is already the hardest trick in the game, making it a bit easier, a bit more reliable. I still want to find a better setup for the position to start with, because I don't like how it's framed perfect here. Uh, but that'll have to wait for another time. Here you can see I started off with a short uh, initial jump, but I should still be able to make it, yeah. So Flutter helped there, I would say, uh, by making that second jump less than, or uh, more than, more lenient than what it normally be. Uh, normally that second jump, because I had a, a, uh, a short first jump. The second jump would have been frame perfect on both the start and release, uh, but in that case I would say it was at least a bit of like a two frame window on one of those. And it still worked. Uh, and that's thanks to Flutter. Uh, as for like potential other uses, I really can't think of any. Uh, this is one, this is a particularly unique scenario where we want a very specific jump heights and very specific jump distances uh, where Flutter just gives us that extra bit of control to get a, a bigger jump through a lower uh, a lower barrier if that makes sense and there's nowhere else in particular where we would want something like that we always ever we almost always want a, a jump that's more easily achieved without brush buffering and all this nonsense 
Uh, it might seem like my execution right now is pretty slow. I would say it's just because I'm out of practice. Uh, I didn't know what to do there. I think I started from a bad position. Yeah, I was too far from the gear. Uh, so like the start of the first jump, I'd say is still probably frame perfect, but uh, the rest of the trick is much more lenient. Okay, so there I, I held jump for two brush buffers and I hit the ceiling. But flutter probably, like a, a short flutter, probably would have worked there. Uh, right now I have to kind of actively think about my flutter pattern in order to execute it correctly, but I imagine with enough practice this would get so natural that uh, it would be just as fast as what we were doing before. Uh, and it would work more lively, so there shouldn't be any negative consequences to doing this. Uh, it could conceivably help to do this on the return trip, but uh, this the reverse fire tab skip should be consistent enough that you shouldn't need a trick like this to make it any easier. Alright, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. I really wanted to get info about this out there, well documented, uh, so that it wouldn't be lost. Uh, thank you for watching, uh, and best wishes wherever you are, whenever you are. Ciao.